Hey guys, it's Phil. It's uh, Friday, so this is a little going into the weekend kind of thing. This is not the video you've been looking for. I realize that sounds like a clever play on the, this is not the, these are not the droids you're looking for, but that's not the point. The point is, this is a little heads up on what's going to be happening with the D-Brick tutorial. So for those of you that don't know what a brick is, other than what you use to build a building, not the brown, or round, round bricks, future, um, the rectangular things, you know what a brick is. But if you happen to mess up a software update on your phone, specifically Samsung phones are fixable with this, more fixable, but the issue is you can fix them yourself without having to send them off for 30 to 50 to even $70 for JTAGging, which is just simply, more often than not, a brick is caused by a corrupted bootloader. And the bootloader is that little bit where you first boot up the phone and then you see um, Samsung flash up, and then it goes into the carrier boot or the Samsung boot logo and boot animation. That little bit before is um, what was upgraded with Nox in 4.3 and 4.4. And it's also what gets corrupted if you, it's what happen. it's what most get, it's what gets corrupted most often. That's the one. When you happen to have software issues with flashing files and whatnot. But the thing to note here is this is not the tutorial. This is not the tutorial. I'm still working on gathering enough files to make it worth making and refreshing the process with my own memory and skills because I have fixed this this Sprint Galaxy S3 was actually the board inside of it was um, I bricked it after the 4.3 update last November so I I hard bricked it not soft bricking soft bricking is just where it gets in a boot loop or it doesn't boot up without power from the wall or something it, it's not it still works and it's fixable normally hard bricking like I did to that one and like I've seen everywhere on the internet it's like oh I hard bricked my device what do I do the first response is always send it in to be JTAG fixed and that's simply it's a very it's an expensive method that is more guaranteed or more likely to work on your device because they're professionals and they know what they're doing I learned this method. I personally picked this up on XDA, which is an amazing, amazing site, and you should definitely check it out. But I picked this up there when my S3 hard bricked, and obviously I was torn apart because that was my only phone. It was my texting line, it was my calling line, it was my main hub for email, for school, for web browsing, for everything. So I had the issue of send it off and pay money, or find a way to fix it before anyone really found out, like the parents. But I ended up just getting a replacement until I found out how to do this. So the 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 issue is, I need to gather some files, and I I don't expect many people to recognize what these files are: PIT files and uh, DBRIC image files of the first 128 megabytes of the EMMC bootloader. Yeah, fun names, but they're really easy to get. Apparently, I just have to find them. So what I will be doing is making a tutorial dedicated to the, um, and this is just color coding just because, the uh, Sprint 32 gigabyte, which will also, there will be specifics for the 16 gigabyte, and then the AT&T, this is the 16 gigabyte, and if there is a 32 gigabyte, I will include, if I can find them, some specs, the files needed for that. Also, I will show you how to do the process on the AT&T, or it's not AT&T, T-Mobile. And I probably won't be able to do Verizon simply because I don't know enough about Verizon bootloader, locked bootloader issues, to, um, to be reasonable enough and knowledgeable enough on them. So, if you have Verizon, I will see if I can find the video that instructed you how to do it, which was, it was badly done for telling you how to do it. It was better for telling you what you have to do. So that will probably be linked, let's say here, over in this corner. And if you have a Verizon S3 and it's bricked, check out that video. It's, um, it's interesting and it tells you what you have to do. It tells you the steps, but I don't feel comfortable telling you how to do it because I don't know. So the um, 
the big thing is you need, if you have been having the issue where your phone hard bricks or, well, won't power on, hard bricking is that. So if you want to test if you're hard bricked, as dismal as this is, you want to um, take the back cover off of your phone, take out the battery, plug it into the wall, and if all that turns on is your red charging LED, but then once you put the battery back in, it goes off after like 10 seconds. Or if you plug it into the computer with a USB cord, it will show up in device manager as a QHS underscore D load mode, which is um, Q because it's Qualc because it's a Qualcomm chip. It has this workaround and external storage is essential here. And that's why Samsung devices are one of the only company, one of the only device makes that can be fixed with this, especially because the Snapdragon or the board used and the processor, the Snapdragon S4 is special in that it can boot from external storage. So if your internal storage, the embedded 32 or 16 gigabytes on your Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile or Verizon, S3 happens to get messed up and possessed by some evil bug, you can boot, you can have your phone boot from the external storage, the SD card slot, if and when you need to work on the internal storage, if you need the phone on. But the point is, you can boot from the external storage, so if you have, you can have it look there if it doesn't find what it needs in the internal storage, meaning this is how the bootloader fix works. If you go down to the link down below, the um, it's a link to a th two threads, there's two links to two threads, and I referenced both of them, I used them as primary sources for myself the entire way for how I debricked my S3s, well it's S3. I bricked it again to test it, but I'm not going to brick it again this time because that was a... Don't try and brick your phone unless you're taking it in for a manufacturer issue. Then they can't get it to work themselves, and it's interesting. But the thing is, if you use the ones down below, if you check the threads, and then I will try to put... I will do my best to upload as many of the files as I can and then put out a video soon... I don't know how soon, but it, I will try to get it out by, this sounds terrible, Next this time, maybe next month, or maybe in two weeks' time. But the point is, if you check down in the links, down in the comment section, or down in the description, the little wibbly bit down there, you will see two links to two XDA forum threads, and they will be how to debrick, specifically the Sprint version, and then how to do a uh, US LTE Galaxy S3 unbrick. There, one is specifically on Windows, and one is on Linux, but there are tools used in the Windows tutorial that let you use the Linux tutorial sort of on Windows. Regardless, check them out and see if they make any sense and if they do you any good. If not, you can probably search through them. They're really long. I'm going to pull them up right now. The one of them is, let's see how, because they've been in existence for a while. One is 70 pages long and one is 63 pages long. So your favorite, favorite tool in those should not be the post response or reply button. It should be the search button, search thread, search before you post. That's the biggest thing I have to say. You will probably find a question similar to yours because a lot of the people that asked were just people who wanted to upgrade their phones, but something went wrong. So definitely go check out those two threads down there. So moving to the next one, the, um, the requirements for the thing are the, the, the requirements for the bootloader fix through the SD card slot are, um, they're listed in the threads, but you will need a, um, I recommend a class 10 memory card if you can get it, a class 10 or class 10 UHS-1, which just means high speed because that's what's inside the phone. It has class 10 memory because it's read-write all the time. So you want to try and find a class 10 or class 10 UHS-1, just whichever is you can get your hands on easier. Um, it will have to match the internal storage of your phone. So if you have a 
32 gigabyte phone, you will want to get a 32 gigabyte class 10 card. If you have a 16 gigabyte phone, you will need to get, or I recommend getting a 16 gigabyte class 10 card. The method has been shown, has been proved to work on low, as low as class four memory cards with as little as two gigabytes of storage, but I would not bet on that because other people have tried to replicate it and it did not work. So you need the class 10, the matching memory size, and then I've had good luck with SanDisk and Samsung. Now Samsung makes sense because Samsung makes the phone and therefore makes the, uh, the storage. Likely, anyway. But um, SanDisk, is, SanDisk is good simply because they are good quality and they're lower priced. More often than not, they're lower priced on Amazon. So definitely go check out SanDisk and Samsung SD cards because once you're done with the uh, the method, if it works, you will have a method of fixing it again. You'll have the files you need to fix it again. And then you'll have a memory card that you can repurpose later for just expandable storage again, and then just move it all onto your computer and then fix the phone if it breaks again, or a phone, a friend needs to fix their phone. So you will need the class 10, the matching memory size, and then the files. I will include, as I said, and this is probably the last bit I'm going to tell you, if this video has been rambling too long, I will probably put a little, I probably should have said that a while ago, regardless. Um, the last bit is check down there, check in the, uh, the wibbly bit, the comment section, comment section, description. It's a long day. It's a long, hot, muggy day. So go check down in the description, the wibbly bit, and check for and read through or skim, depending on how much time you have, the uh, XDA forum threads, both of them. I recommend both of them, as well as going through the, um, going through all of the posts that actually do the steps. If you have Verizon or if you're curious, you will want to go check out the video I linked there before, but it will be linked down there as well. Um, I think that's everything. And then just sit tight. Let me know in the comment section. I will, I will probably not reply to all of the comments about this happened to me. Can you tell me how to do it? Because I've been getting those a lot recently. And I want to make one video to answer all of the questions, and I don't have the time or files for it. So I will put that up soon as best I can. So this was Phil. It's really hot outside. I hope you guys are having an okay summer so far with your hopefully not dead, hopefully not only single phone dead. Um, that was a mouthful. I hope your phones are working. If they're not, check out XDA, like I said. If you need any other help, check XDA or just ask any general questions down in the comments section. I will do my best to get back to you guys because summer school is ramping up for me. Um, I think that's everything I've got for you this time. So expect a D-Brick tutorial soon, within a month. Within 30 days, I will do my best to get one out because I think it's something that needs to be out there and it shouldn't be just, ooh, look at this, I can do it and fix it. It needs to be a step-by-step -step tutorial and that's what I'm gonna bring you guys because that's what I, I hope you know me for by now. Anyway, this has been Phil. This has been a really, really long mouthful explainy words video. And um, I'll see you guys next time.